I'm Richard with Google Cloud. I'm here with Jay. Jay, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, I'm the CEO of Confluent. Confluent is a company that offers a managed service around Apache Kafka and its ecosystem. Terrific. Well, I appreciate you joining us here today to talk a little bit about multi-cloud and platforms and data and tapping into your expertise. So Confluent has a multi-cloud platform, right? You've delivered something that runs across clouds. Why did you do that? Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, you know, for Confluent, it's all about working with real-time streams of, of data. And so the idea is that you can take these streams, capture them from different data systems or applications, and any other application can tap into those and react to them. And so a very natural thing for companies is to want to be able to share these streams across not just uh, applications in one environment, but applications in multiple environments. And so that means between on-premise and cloud and often between multiple clouds. How, uh, is there, are there things you think, if there was something you were thinking about, is there something a customer could learn from your experience? Since you've done some of this work, they may be building something that has to run in different places. One lesson you might throw at them? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think probably the biggest lesson in uh, multi-cloud is you know, really, really thinking through the kind of overall architecture of how things connect together. Um, you know, I think it's relatively difficult to do what we're doing where you have the same service that runs in different environments. What we see is more common with customers is uh, actually connecting different applications or different use cases within the company um, between. And so, you know, in that model, what's most important is how do they share data? How, how does everything connect together? How does it all act as one if you have things that are in different um, you know, in different clouds, in on-premise and cloud, or in or in different regions. Makes sense. So I remember reading a, it goes to the first book you wrote. Maybe not. Uh, I love logs. I think as you've written a lot of things in this space and data architecture and helping hopefully the industry rethink maybe just static, you know, in place data. So when you think of data architectures now, and you're you're helping a customer, you're talking to someone who says, "Look, I do have data in different places." How do you start thinking now of data architectures that do span clouds that are cloud and on-prem? All of a sudden, it's probably not just the big massive data lake anymore, right? Like, how do you start to think about or advise people to rethink their data architecture? Yeah, well, th that that actually turns out to be a big use case for Confluent. So it's you know it's really common that customers have you know older systems on-premise. They often have multiple cloud providers with maybe different use cases uh, in each. Um, and so, you know, this ability to propagate the kind of real-time stream of data from one location to the other, and then be able to connect that into all the different systems that customers may have, that's kind of a, a key capability that, that we help provide customers. And I think it's a big unlock uh, for a lot of the customers. They're, they're actually looking for this flexibility. They want to be able to take advantage of, um, you know, the best of all worlds. Um, what, what, you know, the different products they can get from each cloud provider, um, where they see the best kind of cost performance ratio. And to do that, they have to be able to kind of escape the gravitational pull of data. And that requires this kind of connectivity. What's, what's an anti-pattern in a modern data architecture now, especially if you're spanning clouds or even just, frankly, if you're in one place, where do you look at something now and say, we should stop doing that? I think one of the, um, you know, one of the challenges that companies often run into if they go about this in a more haphazard way is, is not really thinking through um, how data flows, the security of it and connectivity. And I, I think if you don't do that, you do tend to end up with um, a bunch of different kind of, I would call them ad hoc workarounds um, to get done whatever applications need done. And that usually is a, you know, a collection of kind of ad hoc networking rules and security principles and so on. And, you know, so doing that in a more principled way and coming in with an opinion uh, about how things are going to work across environments, if you're going to have more than one, I think is really important. You mentioned before, uh, a bit in passing, but you know, that gravity of data and trying to figure out kind of what choices you might have based on where the data sits. How do you advise a customer or just anyone you're talking to around when does it make sense to pick the, let's say, cloud specific offering? Google Cloud Spanner is amazing. BigQuery is amazing. There's things like that. And you might use Aurora and AWS. You might use Cosmos over here. When do you advise to like pick the thing that's specific to that cloud versus pick something that's going to be more agnostic and, and can operate in multiple places? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think customers want to be able to have the, you know, the best of all worlds, right? And so they, they want to be able to pick the right set of products and environment for the problem that they're trying to solve. And it shouldn't be the case that just because, you know, one application in one part of the business, you know, picked this uh, solution that that dictates every other choice you have to make. And so, you know, there, there is kind of a, um, you know, a supposed platonic ideal of multi-cloud where everything is fully portable and you can move it at the drop of a hat. I, I think that's usually not needed. You know, it's it's un, it's unusual that companies need that much flexibility that they can just move every workload everywhere. I, I think the more important problem is, you know, if you want to have that flexibility, if you want to be able to, um, you know, say pick a data warehouse potentially from a different provider, um, then you picked your operational database. Then you know how how do those things connect? How does everything flow between it? If you can get that right, and if you can you know figure out how to manage uh, some of the cure you know core security data um, you know for for your engineers, um, if you can get some of those basics down and figure out how to govern you know across that environment, then that's actually a great situation. That gives you flexibility. It ensures the different cloud providers have to keep innovating and and providing you a good value. Um, and it gives you flexibility to, to move the things you want to, you know, from place to place. Maybe not, you know, at the drop of the hat, but, uh, you know, over time as, as you kind of understand which environments you're going to take advantage of. And, and I think, you know, if you look at uh, most larger enterprises, I think this is actually just a reality. You know, even those that started with a more disciplined kind of single cloud approach, typically just because of acquisitions, end up with more than one thing. Um, and so, so then it just is really a practical matter of how to connect it M much more than it is whether you know that should be the case or not. It, it actually just is the case. What parting thought do you have about multi-cloud for, for those of folks watching and thinking about either kind of be more intentional about their journey? I mean, some of your advice earlier on data architecture really struck me as it's about intentionality. It's about a little more planning. Other things you might think about is those are now starting to be more serious about how they take advantage of what's available in the various clouds and, and do it the right way. I think just coming coming into multi-cloud with an opinion on how it will be how data will be governed across, how you will connect across. I think these things are really important. I, what we're seeing is customers are kind of ending up in a multi-cloud world, whether um, that's the intention or not, just because of the diversity of activity in a large company, because as I said, of acquisitions, um, because there's you know actually fantastic specialized systems that are only available in one cloud that they need for a particular application. You know, all of that leads them to have to do this. And so coming in with an opinion on how it's gonna work and an architecture that supports it, uh, I think really helps that happen in a healthy way. It leaves you in a better position where you can get more out of all the vendors you work with. Um, in the absence of that, uh, it often, you know, is a bit of a hack. And um, like all hacks, it, it may solve a useful problem, but it usually comes with a little bit uh, of a cost. And, and so I think being being intentional about it is really helpful to the, the companies that are thinking ahead a little bit about how they're going to accomplish this. Well, I love when the Google Cloud customers choose Confluence. So I appreciate you taking some time to make us a little bit smarter and, and hope folks that continue to kind of do some of these things together and whether they pick Google Cloud or other clouds, they're, they're at least able to use something consistent from you all. So thanks for joining me today. Really happy to do it. Thanks for having me, Richard.